2 Samuel chapter 18, Absalom's death. David mustered the men who were with him and appointed over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. David sent the troops out, a third under the command of Joab, a third under Joab's brother Abishai, son of Zariah, and a third under Ittai, the Gittite. The king told the troops, I myself will surely march out with you. But the men said, You must not go out. If we are forced to flee, they won't care about us. Even if half of us die, they won't care. But you are worth 10,000 of us. It would be better now for you to give us support from the city. The king answered, I will do whatever seems best to you. So the king stood beside the gate while all the men marched out in units of hundreds and of thousands. The king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Ittai, Be gentle with the young man. Absalom for my sake, and all the troops heard the king giving orders concerning Absalom to each of the commanders. The army marched into the field to fight Israel, and the battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. There the army of Israel was defeated by David's men, and the casualties that day were great, 20,000 men. The battle spread out over the whole countryside, and the forest claimed more lives that day than the sword. Now Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was riding his mule, and as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak, Absalom's head got caught in the tree. He was left hanging in midair, while the mule he was riding kept on going. When one of the men saw this, he told Joab, I just saw Absalom hanging in an oak tree. Joab said to the man who had told him this, What? You saw him? Why didn't you strike him to the ground right there? Then I would have had to give you ten shekels of silver and a warrior's belt. But the man replied, Even if a thousand shekels were weighed out into my hands, I would not lift my hand against the king's son. In our hearing, the king commanded you and Abishai and Ite protect the young man Absalom for my sake. And if I had put my life in jeopardy and nothing is hidden from the king, you would have kept your distance from me. Joab said, I'm not going to wait like this for you. So he took three javelins in his hand and plunged them into Absalom's heart while Absalom was still alive in the oak tree. And ten of Joab's armor bearers summoned Absalom, struck him, and killed him. Then Joab sounded the trumpet, and the troops stopped pursuing Israel, for Joab halted them. They took Absalom, threw him into a big pit in the forest, and piled up a large heap of rocks over him. Meanwhile, all the Israelites fled to their homes. During his lifetime, Absalom had taken a pillar and erected it in the king's valley as a monument to himself, for he thought, I have no son to carry on the memory of my name. He named the pillar after himself, and it is called Absalom's monument to this day. David mourns. Now Ahimaaz, son of Zadok, said, let me run and take the news to the king that the Lord has delivered him from the hand of his enemies. You are not the one to take the news today, Joab told him. You may take the news another time, but you must not do so today because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to a Cushite, Go, tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed down before Joab and ran off. Ahimaaz, son of Zadok, again said to Joab, Come what may, please let me run behind the Cushite. But Joab replied, My son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. He said, Come what may, I want to run. So Joab said, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Cushite. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates, the watchman went up to the roof of the gateway by the wall as he looked out. He saw a man running alone. The watchman called out to the king and reported it. The king said, If he is alone, he must have good news. And the man came closer and closer. Then the watchman saw another man running, and he called down to the gatekeeper, Look, another man running alone. The king said, He must be bringing good news too. The watchman said, It seems to me that the first one runs like Ahimaaz, son of Zadok. He's a good man, the king said. He comes with good news. Then Ahimaaz called out to the king, All is well. He bowed down before the king 
with his face to the ground and said, Praise be to the Lord your God. He has delivered up the men who lifted their hands against my lord the king. The king asked, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimaaz answered, I saw great confusion just as Joab was about to send the king's servant and me, your servant, but I don't know what it was. The king said, Stand aside and wait here. So he stepped aside and stood there. Then the Cushite arrived and said, My lord the king, hear the good news. The lord has delivered you today from all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. As he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son.